Uh, yeah, it's Friday. This is the segment where we highlight those in public positions or doing public things uh, that haven't been playing the game of dialogue this week. Uh, can I just start off by saying no comments so far from um, Dr. Belinda Borrell, the academic recipient of $649,997 worth of uh, your money via Health Research Council New Zealand for her senior leadership research and training building on her expertise in Kaupapa Māori research. Uh, she's amongst a number of other academics and researchers receiving millions between them for Māori spiritual and traditional healing research in the midst of what is a persisting health funding crisis in this country where everyone from midwives, nurses, doctors and paramedics are under-resourced. So I certainly hope Dr Borrell, whose PhD centred on conceptual discussion of societal privilege from an Indigenous perspective, will have the courage and confidence uh, in her research to defend the need for over a half a million dollars of your money to continue pursuing it. But this week, though, mainly, uh, I think it's the curse of the Chris's that has marred the platform once again. Both Chris Bishop and Chris Hipkins avoiding fronting to answer the questions you want put to them. First, Chris Bishop. He's a good yarn uh, when you can get him on, and he tends to shoot it relatively straight. But my God, there is a Chris Bishop-shaped hole in the wall anytime you want to talk to him about something like the guidelines for transgender males competing in women's sport. Anything like that, which is annoying, uh, both for him and for us, because he happens to be the Minister of Sports, and uh, this was one of the foremost stories this week in the field of sports. So he's got a little inner conflict to work out with himself there if he wants to continue being the Minister for Sport, because I have a sneaky feeling this issue won't be going away. Uh, we had the Deputy Prime Minister this week warning the CEO of Sport New Zealand, Raylene Castle, that she'll need to be rewriting the rules around biological males competing against women in sport quote, urgently in the following months. And yet the sports minister's line on it was there was a watching brief indicating certainly that he wasn't overly concerned. Of course, the big question to come out of that was given the safeguarding of fairness in women's sports was written into the coalition agreement between New Zealand First and National. Was Bishop in breach of that agreement with his slightly more laissez-faire approach to New Zealand uh, unchanging, sport New Zealand's unchanging, gu unchanging guidelines? Mr Peter seemed to suggest as much, but Bishop won't comment. Certainly wouldn't front uh, for an interview when he uh, when when we pressed his team for at least a comment, uh, Winston's uh, on Winston's interview that morning, they said absolutely nothing. Uh, didn't even acknowledge the request. I don't know whether that's some sort of intra-governmental politics at play there, or whether my questions to Mr. Bishop were swept off into the abyss uh, by the firm undercurrent of wokeness that flows through the National Party, like the Hutt River on a rainy day. Either way, Bishop's been uh, slightly holier than now this week, so he makes the list. Up next is Chris Hipkins who stood wide-shouldered in the mainstream media this week, inserting himself firmly into the debate around whether it's the government's business to be messing around with fairness and inclusion in sport. I was excited when I saw this, because uh, up till now I had nothing really to ask Shippy on the show about. He's been in hiding, a little bit sort of incognito since the election, and seemed to have been hoping to sit back and let the uh, coalition of chaos unravel itself without having to do much work. Now that he's come out and actually started opposing stuff the government's doing, which is the central job of the leader of an opposing party, I thought I'd send off a text to his office and get him on to do his thing. But they said no again. Or actually they said nah, uh, which they've taken to using quite a lot in response to my media inquiries. It, nah, they said when I asked if Hipkins would come on to discuss his comments. That's one for the government. Which I thought was just such a strange thing for an embattled opposition leader to say when asked to scrutinise the government, whose job they'd like to take in two years' time. Uh, really odd. To Hipkins' press team, if you want to leave commentary on this topic to the government, don't uh, let Hipkins talk about it on the news, on the telly, all right? Uh, Hipkins has come on in the past, though. In fact, he's made more appearances on our show, I believe, than has Prime Minister Chris Luxon. Uh, but recently, the reluctance has returned and the ban on appearing on the platform seems to have resurfaced. Uh, special mention, I suppose, should go to Chris Luxon, though I guess there's nothing more that needs to be said really about him. I just want to remind everyone that the Prime Minister of New Zealand and the leader of the coalition government still has not appeared lately on the platform and remains the only political leader out of the three coalition parties and the Labour Party not to have appeared on the show since the change in government. So I think that speaks for itself, really. Uh, that is Holier Than Now for this week. Let's have... Thank you, Josh. And thanks, Roman.